from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. All right, come on through. Just waiting on all of you to come on through, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody come on through. Let's chop it up. How y'all living? Glad to have everybody in here. Doing the late night tap in, check in. What's good with the family? Um, first of all, got to give a happy Black History Month. It's the month of February. Black History Month has officially kicked off. We celebrate, and every month is Black History Month, technically. We never stop um, acknowledging Black history because world history is Black history. Let's be very clear. Black History Month is just when we overly emphasize the history and we share it with the world. But every single day, every month of the year, we're discussing our history among ourselves because that's very important. Because when you understand your past and what went wrong, what went right, you learn from that. And we take and draw from that and we use that to build to move forward. And that's what we're doing. So for Black History Month, definitely get your children involved. Really lace them with game and let them know the importance of it. Um, get them books, books such as um, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. That's a good start at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. And there's so many others you can get for them for Black History Month. But whatever you do, educate them. And also, man, for Black History Month, family, we got to be careful out here because uh, the usual suspects, um, they'll use <clears throat> historic Black um, dates and timelines to pull little um, shenanigans. Um, we see a lot of weird stuff going on now already leading into Black History Month, that whole thing. I talked about this the other day with a statue of um, Jackie Robinson. I think it was out there in St. Louis. The statue was taken down, which was stolen from a park. And then they found the statue all burned to, to rubble. And I'm saying we got to be very aware that it, uh, most likely law enforcement was involved with that. I don't think some random vandals took a, what, six, seven hundred pound statue out of a park and drug it somewhere and burned it up with all of the cameras that's out here. They just come on, man. That's that's not a a quickie job that you do, man. It takes a minute to burn uh, the the legs off and tear the thing down and then haul it off somewhere. What kind of vehicle did they haul it off in? You know what I'm saying? This takes time. You don't just steal a statue like that quickly. You know, it takes time and equipment to do that. And again, I'm thinking that maybe somebody in law enforcement was involved with that. You remember, man, out here in um, Los Angeles, there's been several um, vandalism events that's been happening. There was a um, like a hip hop store. I want to say it was in Linwood a few weeks ago were some dudes, and it looked like some, probably some Hispanic dudes, they were all covered up, but they drove a car in the store and started just ransacking in and taking all the stuff. And what was interesting is that their car was some kind of government car. That was very interesting. A lot of people kind of slid past that story, but the car was a government car. 
And when we were vandalized at the museum, there were some janky license plates because we got security cameras. We um, got the license plate. And I went to all types of private investigators trying to um, find out what's going on with them plates. And not, those plates aren't normal. Those are the kind of plates that um, they were telling me that somebody in law enforcement would have to get access to. You can't even get regular access to them. It's a real interesting dynamic. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we gotta be <clears throat> gotta be very careful about what's going on out here. It's Black History Month. Um, where my southern folks? Where my folks down in Alabama? I just retweeted a story, man. They found another brother who was in prison down there in Alabama. This we keep seeing these stories like every week now. This brother was in prison, died in prison, sent his body home, no organs. Family, we're going to have to keep our eyes on these prison systems down there in the South. Straight up and down, we're going to have to start focusing our attention and our energy on that. We can't let our brothers just get slaughtered in these jails and they're, they're ripping their organs off. Man, we can't sit around and just let that happen. When we're going to have to really focus on that and say, hey, man, enough is enough. We can't have these folks just doing open genocide because then it won't stop. You understand what I'm saying, family? When they do stuff like that, when they're getting that bowl, because if these folks don't get checked, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And it's some genocidal stuff going on down in the prisons down in the South right now. This my, is this my daughter in the back. Excuse her. We know down in Mississippi, behind one prison, they found a, some grave sites with like 200 and something bodies there. So they are still wallowing in the tradition of anti-black genocide down there. And we just can't let that go on. We're going to have to start putting some emphasis and putting some eyeballs on that. When we start focusing on that and and paying a lot of attention to it, then we'll start rectifying it. But family, we're going to have to start seriously looking and seeing what's going on in these prisons down here because it's some genocidal stuff. We shouldn't be used as um, spare body parts to these white supremacists. You see, this is why the crime bill is very important. We, we, we got to get something going on, man. This, this anti-black targeting, we have to stop letting that be a normalized phenomenon. We have to say enough is enough. And we have to stop being afraid and we have to stop letting people give us janky deals. Speaking of janky deals, um, there was a report from um, one of these reparations places out here in California. It was, um, I forgot what the name of it was, what the, the, the committee was. It wasn't the reparations task force. It's one of these caucuses, the California Black Caucus, something like that. And they gave a report of their reparations recommendations, no cash payments. It's a whole bunch of nothing burgers with nothing sauce on it. And it's we, we ain't going for that. It was a bunch of gibber jabber gibberish. They're talking about they need to part of the reparations is an apology, um, more laws to protect black people's hair. I mean, nothing burger, nothing burger, nothing burger. Family, and I'm look, look, if they want to play that game, play that game. We just, we shouldn't go to the polls. We let them know, man, that's what we do. We sit on our hands as far as voting, dude. We let the system crumble and we focus our energy on other things. If they're not going to give us something in the electoral process, we simply don't participate in it. We got to have political discipline, social discipline, cultural different di discipline. If we don't get what we're supposed to get, why are we voting? They're coming to us asking us to vote. And you know, I, I really hate when people do this. Well, you niggas are begging. Why, man, man, we ain't begging nothing. They're coming to us asking us to vote. And we're asking them what the hell for. If you're not going to give us nothing, get out of our damn face. That's the attitude that we have to have, man. I don't know why black folks act scared to say that to these people. If you're not going to give us something, get your ass 
out of my face. Don't come down to the church singing. Don't bring Biden to the cookout. Take your ass on somewhere if we're not getting nothing from participating in this process. We're sitting here elevating all of these people and they're getting all types of benefits. And then when we say, hey, where is ours? Because we are in need, because we've been deprived. We get every excuse under the book. Well, we're going to do something. We'll make it illegal to talk about your hair. No, 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 no. I want the same thing you're giving to these non-citizens. Don't tell me what you cannot do. I don't want to hear what you don't have and what you can't do because you're doing it for everybody else. I want exactly what you're doing and then some for all of these other people. We got to stop being afraid to say that family. And if they don't want to do that, well, then I'm going to chill and not participate in the voting process. We're going to use our energy to build our own system over here on this side of town. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to get on code with each other and just build on our own. You see, that's the mindset we got to have. We've got a lot of folks in here. Let me look in here. A lot of folks in here. Let me get some calls in a second because I see people are requesting so far. Um, let's get Ronnie's burner and um, let's get um, on code FBA after that. Ronnie's burner, what's happening? Get Ronnie's burner. Mr. Ronnie. Okay, I guess your burner ain't really working that good. Mr. On Code, hop on. Yeah, I guess his joint ain't working. All right, let's get Mr. Different in here. Let's get different. All right, Mr. Different, hop on. Hey, Tyreek, what's up, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? <clears throat> All right, man. I wanted to ask about your documentary. Is you going to have, like, when you come to the MCs, they talk about their stories. Is you going to have, like, an anime short with it? Like, if they're talking about certain, like, things that was going on in the past? Like, how they have, like, an anime with it? No, no, we're not going to have like little animations and stuff like that. We have a lot of um, stock footage, um, footage of them back in the day. We have a lot of pictures and images of them back in the day. And we, I mean, we do talk about the MCs. We go deep into every element. We talk about, you know, what got them started, who influenced them, um, the difference between the dis the disco MCs and the disco DJs that's a whole big thing. Cause um, it's some people I know that does that, and yeah, it's some people I know that does that. They were kind of interested in seeing it because I showed them your trailer, and they were kind of interested in trying to see if they can work on it doing that. Okay, so basically, you're just kind of soliciting for your, your homie. So we're done with the film, man. The film is, oh, okay. is a wrap. Right? Yeah, okay. the film is done. I'm, I'm I'm literally sending the credits to my editors right now. That's what I was doing all day. We're getting all the credits together. So um, shout out to everybody who um, got involved with the film. Um, shout out to all the producers. Raise your hand if you became a producer on the film. Raise your hand. Let me tell you how important... The film, my, the, the film is Microphone Check, by the way. That's the hip-hop documentary we got coming out. This thing is a monster. It's a monster. We got, um, oh, man, it's such a phenomenal film. And this is going to change the game. We go so deep into hip-hop. Where? Let me see the hands of the people who were producers on the film. If you became a producer on the film, you know who else is a producer on the film? An executive producer? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is, is an executive producer on the film. So your name is next to the big dogs family. See, this is why getting involved with these kind of projects, man, you, you get your name up there with the heavyweights. Our good brother Kyrie Irving is an executive producer on the movie Microphone Check. And um, so many of you, brothers and sisters. So we're getting everybody's, I was earlier just gathering everybody's name and getting all the special thanks because there were a lot of people who... Um, 
um, got the special thank pack thanks package on the Kickstarter page. And it's it, it, I was doing this thing all day because a lot of y'all be having these nicknames. Oh Lord, some of these nicknames I'm I'm like I ain't putting this some of this shit on here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes people just want to make it real extra. Um, you know, I, regular names is fine, but you had niggas like, yeah, my name is Hot Nuts seventy three, and I'm I'm not putting no damn Hot Nuts seventy three in no movie. I'm I, I don't. It's not that kind of film. Now, buck breaking, we, we can use Hot Nuts seventy three in buck breaking. Holler at me, and I get your name in that. But in this movie, it's not. It's no no Hot Nuts seventy three. None of these weird nicknames some of y'all niggas be trying to give us to put in these movies. And also, we're not putting your website. We can't do that. You know, yeah, we can't put your website. No website. We can't put www.tampagrills.com and none of that shit. We can't do that because of distribution. A lot of distributors don't let you put website URLs into to films like that. It's, it's a whole legal thing if it goes to certain platforms so but we would all of you guys who became producers and got special thanks packages we got you we, we, we got you and this film is looking phenomenal we go real deep into hip-hop and the, where the mcs came from and where the rapping came from and who influenced who i'm telling you this is the most complete hip-hop documentary we we talk about um, that early party in 73, what happened, who was there, who was not there, uh, what was happening before 73 at the Herb Party, what happened between 73 and 77, you know, because that party, a lot of that stuff is left out. We talk about some of the early records where we were rhyming on them. We, we, this record's going back to the 1920s where we're rhyming on them. We, we talk about where the b-boy moves come from. Oh, man, we, we talk about graffiti and how that got tied into hip-hop. This is the deep film. There's no hip-hop documentary goes as deep as we win. And the grand finale, we save the best for last, that whole the black and Latino 50-50. We, we spent about 45 minutes on that alone. We, we slow rolls that bullshit we spend about 45 minutes on that subject alone that's near the end of the movie dismantling every piece of that lie because that's a that's the thing about this film we're just missing and, and and um getting rid of a lot of the lies that's been about our culture which we we, we should have done that a long time ago all right but microphone check will be in theaters we're looking at April, family. We're looking at April. And I'm going to keep you guys posted on all of that stuff. Um, AZ, what's up, AZ? Hey, uh, how's it going? Uh, big fan, Tariq. I just had a quick question. Like, how does one become a producer, like, in your future uh, projects? Great question. Um, usually, we do a crowdfunding. Um, we'll use Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and uh, people can get involved that way, man. We make it real simple. Um, we do it the same way Hollywood do it, does it. They, you know, they get certain people to to kind of contribute and get all of these films done. That's the Hollywood model, and we did it on a grassroots level, and we've been very successful at it. And um, yeah, this one right here, this microphone check, man, this is going to be a a monster. So shout out to everybody who got involved with this because this one is going to go in the history books for real. Everybody's sitting around waiting on this one. So we got the heavyweights involved in this, man. So um, I, again, I got a shout out to the family who got involved with this film, man. I mean, you guys are going to be in the historic records. This is going to be one. For, they're going to be discussing this in, in colleges all over but yeah, look because y'all saw what we were going through just the the, the trailer did y'all remember the tra people are, they've only seen two minutes of this movie and that's the trailer and motherfuckers lost their damn minds off the trailer boy people lost their minds 
they were making reaction videos, calling, getting articles removed when it was getting posted on certain websites and making weird threats. And, oh, man, because the lies are going to stop. That the lies are going to stop. And the, a lot of people have a vested interest into promoting these lies because right now hip hop, it's very mainstream now. And this summer you got the Olympics. They're going to have breaking in the Olympics. So hip hop is going to be on the front burner of the, the world stage. So there's going to be a lot of people doing a lot of lying, trying to claim the culture. And they know this movie is about to bust up that bullshit. This movie is going to stop all of that stuff. So that's why a lot of people are shaking in their boots. But And, and here's another thing. We're not beating up on nobody in the movie because I, I don't want to make it seem like we're just targeting folks and just kind of, no, 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 it ain't that. We're not being petty because um, the, the, the word is with some of these folks, they're going around telling folks we got a movie coming out where we're just dissing Latinos. We're not doing that. This movie is not dissing Latinos. We're just clearing up lies. We're not dissing anybody. We, we give some Latinos their props from being for being students. You were great students of hip hop. You came later and did some wonderful things later on, but all that 50-50 nonsense, we're not doing that. We're not going to disrespect some of these pioneers that's still alive right now who don't get the props and shine they deserve, and that's what we're doing. We're giving these real pioneers who was there risking their lives for this culture, we're giving them the props they deserve. We're not making up the you know, mythological Puerto Ricans to, to give them co-credit. We're not doing that. And we're not lowering the bar to give random Puerto Ricans credit just for being in the Bronx. That's disrespectful, too. We got to understand when people do things that are disrespectful. Speaking of Latino disrespect, did y'all see it was one woman from some Latino organization talking about how the civil rights movement was meant to well, um, Dr. King and the civil rights movement affected them because they were discriminated against like black folks and, oh, we were treated just like the blacks and um, the Jim Crow signs. We couldn't go here and <clears throat> there were whites only. And we, man, and I'm going to, a lot of people check them on that BS. That's horse crap. We, we we don't let people rewrite history because it's disrespectful. Now, the Latinos, when they say that, they're not telling you that they were fighting to be classified as white. They weren't fighting for no equality. They were fighting to be classified as white. We were fighting to say, hey, nobody should be discriminated against. That's what black people were fighting for, foundational black Americans. We were like, hey, all of these restrictive laws need to stop. Everybody has to be treated equal. We were fighting for equality for everybody. Let's be clear. The Latinos, those organizations, they were fighting to be white. They were like, they were perfectly fine with discrimination as long as it's not us. No, no, no. Us, we white, just like you. So let's get let us get over here on the on the clan side and you do what you want to do with them. In fact, those Latino organizations, they were telling us to kick rocks back in the day. Those men, come on, let's stop letting people lie about history. LULAC, that organization, one of the largest Latin American organizations, them people back in the 50s and 60s told black folks to kick rocks. They openly said they don't have any solidarity with us. They said the, ne the, the Negro problem is their problem. Yeah, we ain't got nothing to do with that. They openly shit it on us. Don't let these people rewrite no damn history, just like with this whole Puerto Rican thing in hip hop. They were shitting on black people in the Bronx. And now it's this whole thing where they want to pretend it was a Benetton ad and everybody was holding hands, eating chicken and empanadas. It That, that ain't true. No, nobody gets to circle back after we had to suffer the bumps and bruises of maintaining a culture and building it up. And then people want to circle back around like, yeah, I was right there with you. No, no, not really. So we, we're telling the truth. You know, the truth is power. And I want black folks to stop being afraid to tell the truth because we get this whole thing where we feel like, well, they, they don't want to be our friend no more. So we want them around. I don't know what for, but we, we just need to play and just play nice. If y'all want some credit, I give you some credit. 
black people, please stop falsely giving people credit for things that we've done and created. Why do y'all do that? I, I really don't know why black folks do that. There's no benefit in it. They going to talk shit about you anyway. You gain nothing. You what you think you're going to get you some Latina ass? Oh, come on. Come on now, Margarita. <laughs> them, them Puerto Rican breasts just look real nice. We both created hip hop. If I was going to get some of that. <laughs> Thirsty niggas. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's stop playing games. Please stop playing games out here. And gatekeep your history. Lord, let's get some people up in this room. Let's get um civic crisis. Civic crisis. What's happening? Civic crisis? Hop on, man. Turn your microphone on. All right. While we're waiting on civic crisis, let's get Al Patron in here. <laughs> Al Patron. That's a hell of a name, Al Patron. What's on your mind, Mr. Al Patron? Turn your microphone on. Yeah, I just want to say uh, happy Black History Month, guys. Thank you so much. Now, where are you from, brother? Uh, I live in Canada, but I'm originally Senegalese. There you go. There you go. Happy Black. Well, y'all don't do hap Do y'all do Black History Month in Canada? Yeah, of course, man. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hell, I don't know if y'all do Moose Monday. Yeah, no, it's the same over here. Oh, okay, okay. Well, shout out to you guys, man. Shout out to y'all. All right, brother. All right. I don't know what y'all do up there, man. Uh, let me see. We got a lot of folks in here. And raise your hand if you want to get on, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're doing the late night chop up. And don't forget to get your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com and the coconut butter deodorant of root work is on Amazon. You go to Amazon and type in coconut butter root work and you can get that on Amazon. And it'll get to you by, I think, Friday. Uh, Marlon, what's going on, Mr. Marlon? Mr. Marlon. All right, Mr. Marlin. Can you hear me, Brother Flex? Yes, sir. How are you? How you doing, brother? Straight out of Detroit, Michigan, to L.A. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Shout out to the D. What's on your mind? Hey, brother, real quick. Um, You were speaking about the Latinos, uh, you know, uh, speaking against us. And uh, I wanted yeah. to tell you, up here in Detroit, you know, the brother at work, you know, he was talking about, you know, like he got five kids and a wife at home that don't work. And so mm. he, he consists to say that, well, you know, we are our own worst enemy. Come to find out the woman that he has at home that he calls his wife is Latino. And I said, yo, my man, mm. you wouldn't let no black woman sit on her ass at home with five kids. You be talking crap. You talking shit about her. Real talk. You know, uh, black first, bro, brother Flex. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, man. These dudes. Yeah, I don't like that double standard. These dudes be wanting sisters to have what y'all gonna bring to the table. Shaquita. Shaquita, you gonna have to bring me something. You gonna have to do you know, make all that. And then got some big old Armenian heifer at home letting her post up and not do nothing. And you know, black folks give passes to all these other people, majorly. Got a very bad habit of giving passes to all these other folks. Um, and by the way, family, we're going to, um, um, again, the, we're, we're still trying to put together an event for um, Washington, D.C. this June, because we need to get out here in these streets. Want to get some suggestions from the family. Who are some of the speakers we should have? Who would you suggest, suggest that we get for the 2024 Rally for Reparations? Who should we get? Who would you guys recommend as speakers? Um, and I already got my list. I want to really double down. You know, I want to get um, get bring Dr. Randy Short back, bring Sister Mayotte, Dr. Mayotte, bring her back up there. So many people. Um, like I said, um, Randy Short, Dr. Mayotte, um, um, Black Alpha, um, Afro Elite. 
Get some of the new brothers up there to do their thing, bring Brother Kaba back. Y'all throw some names. Who are some people y'all think we should get? Want to bring Reza out there. Reza was supposed to do the last one with some scheduling things that popped up. But I would love to bring Reza out. Um, I'll throw some names. Who would y'all like to see? Brother Marcel Dixon, definitely bringing him out. And he's running for office again. So got to bring Brother Marcel out. So what names, who would y'all recommend, family? Y'all throw some names at me. Who are some speakers who you think would be great for the rally for reparations? Let's get um, Turner Twins. All right. Turner Twins. All right, Turner. Can you hear me? <coughs> hey, bro, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Hey, sir? get Dr. Cornell, get uh, Cornell West. Black Alpha had him yeah. on there. That would be a major move right there, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to see what he would have to say about reparations. I mean, that would in, be very interesting. In DC, like, that would be huge. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I, we got to reach out to him and see what he says. I would love to see what he has to say about it. Um, yeah, that would be good, Dr. Cornell West. I would love to get Cat Williams. Cat Williams, um, I haven't spoken with Cat in years, but yeah, if his people is out there, let him know. We would like for him to come down and yeah, give us three minutes. Come up there and just chop it up with us for three minutes. Because I know he's been speaking highly about reparations, so Cat Williams would be a great look. So y'all throw some more names. What's up, Uncle? Mr. Uncle, hop in, sir. Hey, you know, what about Dr. Claude Anderson? Yeah, I was thinking that, but I don't think Brother Anderson is in the best um, health position right now to be doing physical or in-person lectures. He I, He's not really doing too much of that. But I did think about Dr. Claude Anderson, but I don't think he's... Um, coming out like that. I think the wife is kind of, you know, letting him um, lay low. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to reach out to him and just kind of feel it out and see what's going on. But, yeah, that would be wonderful to have Dr. Claude Anderson. That would be fly. Wait, this Martin dude, were, were you the moist dude that um, <clears throat> called the other day, brother? The Martin guy? You the, the, the buck broken dude? Martin, are you that buck broken dude from West Africa? A question about your rally. About who? About your rally in June. Okay, what about? So, what about? So, uh, is this uh, what you guys consider fighting? Um, yeah, it's it's better than what you're doing. It's just fighting to spread your butt cheeks open. It's better than that. Okay, and I have a, a speaker suggestion. Uh, you can get a uh, crispy, and he can speak at that rally too. All right. The only thing is crispy is your finger going up in Zaddy's pussy. <laughs> that's the only thing that's crispy. All right. Anyway, thank you, thank you, girlfriend. All right. All right. We got the that's the moist tether who's admitted to being buck broken, trying to give us advice. He's over there. Being somebody's madam for Zaddy, wearing women's perfume. He smells like white diamonds and must. So that's what's going on with him. All right, let's get um, let's get some more people in here. Um, let's get T on. Let's get T on. Let's get um, Sophia. T on Sophia. We've got a lot of folks trying to get on. Hello. Uh, What's up, Tia? Yeah, real quick, I just want to say, uh, you know, um, Denzel Washington did one of the best Malcolm X in history. Can you hear me? Sorry about that. Yeah, everybody else mute your stuff, folks. Everybody else mute your thing. Go ahead, Tia. Yeah, so, and and most people don't know this, but Malcolm, but um, Morgan Freeman did a Malcolm X, and way years before he did it. Where am I going with this? I, Tariq, I know you can find a good actor that could do five minutes of Malcolm X, the ballot or the bullet, or some 
important message pertaining to reparations, just the reenactment. Have a brother come out that could do a good Malcolm X. It'd be incredible. Lord. Just think about okay, thank you, thank you, so thank you, thank you, brother. Lord. Okay, we let's not do that, family. Family, let's not come up with the funky finger production ideas. Okay, I, I'm this is I'm opening the phone lines for suggestions, and sometimes when you do that, you get these niggas who come in with the Renum Spoons ideas. That was a horrible idea, brother. Listen, 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 brother. Listen, what you need to do, brother, to really make this reparations rally pop off, what you need to do, you need to go down to the um, the Sally's Beauty Supply. They got one over there in Maryland, because I used to live in Maryland. I was stationed over there. Um, they got a Sally's Beauty Supply. Get you a wig, right? Okay, we're going to get that wig, and then what you do, there's a beauty salon up there in D.C., on Washington Avenue, you you give it a part, put a part in there, and then you put it on somebody and let them do some Frederick Douglass speeches, and that's gonna really set it off. When you, you know, just five minutes of Frederick Douglass, that's all you need to do. Five minutes of Frederick Douglass with the wig on. You gotta have the wig on, man, to really sell it. And then what we gonna do? We gonna get some uh, FBA praise dancers. All right, they're gonna do a praise dance to um, some Kurt Franklin for about 15, 20 minutes. That's going to get everybody in the spiritual position they need to be in because June, you know, that's the um, summer solstice. And um, it's going to really... Uh, God damn. Oh, goodness. Thank you. You know, I, I'm not trying to shit on you, brother. <laughs> Much respect. I welcome everybody's input. But damn. I welcome everybody's input. Uh, I'm trying to be professional. They say there's no bad ideas. There's only interesting ones. Now, that was a pretty bad idea. That's pretty bad. Um, Sophia, hop in, dear. Hi. Happy Black History Month. So I Happy just want to verify these. Just want to verify these colors because I'm going to this crochet party and we're doing black history colors. So what is FBA colors again? Because I want to be correct in that because I ain't crocheting nobody else's colors. Yes, indeed. we can do red, black, red, white, and blue. We, we're still rocking with red, white, and blue in, in honor of Grace Wisher. That's the, the foundation of Black American Sister who was really the one sewing the current flag that we have now. So the red, white, and blue, we're still rocking with those. You know, we, when I see that, I, 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 I see, I see the other side. Yeah, but the you, thing, got, yeah, but the the thing is, they um, it's all about perspective. It's all about because they, them folks don't give a damn about the American flag. These um, th these folks will pick up a Confederate flag at the drop of a hat. Remember, the same folks who are sitting sitting around here waving an American flag. They were trying to kill people under that flag. They were they had a Confederate flag and they, they'll change flag like they change draws. So you know, as long as we know what the intent is, we're gonna be good to go. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's get um let me see. Uh, let's get um it's special girl. Let's get special girl in here. Miss Special Girl. How you doing, King Flex? Peace to the family. How's everyone huh? doing? We're good, dear. How are you, beloved? I'm lovely. Um, Flex, you know what I'm thinking? Yes, ma'am. I'm thinking we should reach out, and I say we like I'm doing it, but reach out to Shar mm -hmm. Richardson, a young sister. You know, the track star, right? Which, which one? Which one? Which one? My memory is so bad. It's, um... Sh yes, her. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we can. You know, that's we're open for it. Right. Um. Yeah. I she wouldn't be a bad fit. I would. We would love to see her do that. Um. Uh, but people like you know, she has a lot of endorsements, and you know, they got a lot of handlers mm -hmm. that you know they don't want their their brand to be too controversial. So we, you know, if we're going to get people in the sports industry, we got to get people who are, you know, they're not afraid to really speak up, speak up. Because, you know, let, let, to be fair, because I'm not trying to beat up on the sister or anybody in the sports game, uh, uh, they are on a leash, unfortunately. That's true. 
you know, they they just can't say what they need to say. People will dangle their money in front of them and they'll take their little paper away. So I, I don't beat up on them for that. That's why I give my, I, I'm shouting out to Brother Kyrie Irving. He, you know, he was an executive producer of our movie, Microphone Check, and he's not afraid to step out there, but he's an anomaly. Um, we need people with that kind of energy. But yeah, but sister, throw some more ideas. Let's brainstorm. I'm, I'm, I'm all open for ideas. We, we're not trying to do a Malcolm X reenactment, but I'm all <laughs> up. I'm, up, I'm all up for ideas. If you got some good ideas, <laughs> definitely reach out and let me know, beloved. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, man, y'all throw some ideas, man, because um, what we're gonna do, man, what I want to do is the rally for reparations slash Juneteenth celebration. It's Juneteenth, so we got to tie the whole culture thing in. So make it a Juneteenth celebration as well as a rally and just tie it all in. And um, we're, we're thinking big this year. We're looking at possible musical performances just to really, really set this thing off. Lecturers, uh, music performances, have the, the, the muralist out there thinking about having a go, DC go-go band out there. Just really, really set it off because now we got time. Um to really get it popping, we got some months out. Remember, the last one we did, we only had like three weeks lead time. We got all of that together in three weeks and we made it pop off. So now that we got some months in front of us, we can really, really get this thing going like we need to and just make it real fly because we we need to be out here vibing with each other, man. We need to be out here in the grass, um, out here networking because the energy was phenomenal last time. And we need to double down on that energy. All right. Let's get a Mike of all trades. Mike of all trades in here. All right, Mr. Mike. Yes, sir. What's up, Flex? What's going on, brother? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What about Brother Sandy Darity for the reparations rally? That could work. That could work. We can have some people reach out to him. And Sandy Darity is on top of his game. He spits a lot of truth to power, so shout out to him. So, you know, we can look into that, too. We can definitely look into that. Thank you. All right, let's get Pandrex, and then we'll get Barry. Padre X. Padre, what's up, Padre, Padre X, man? That's uh, I appreciate uh, bringing me on, man. This is a blessing to me. I'm originally from Compton, and uh, my man. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm, here, I'm originally from Compton, man, and uh, I was going through a real tough time after a divorce a few years ago, and I just ran across you, man. You've been you're very, I mean, it's like noble intelligence. It's it's hard. You cracked me up, man, and I, I just wanted to call and see, offer a, a couple of ideas for you. Yeah, I don't know if you know. Yes, sir. Uh, there was a, especially the other day you were talking about how black, everybody thinks blacks just laid down in the past and didn't fight back. Now, my father's side of the family, they're from Scoville, Mississippi, about 15 minutes from the border of Alabama, right? Uh mm -hmm. There's a there was a scene back there, or a situation. It's called the Scuba Mississippi Riots of 1903 or six. And long story short, this train conductor, a white man, got off the train one day and pulled some Karen shit, right? And he was trying to discipline this black man, and they end up killing that black man. And a couple of other blacks tried to defend him, and they just lynched. The white people went and lynched about five or six people. So what mm -hmm. happened uh, is later on that day, the, uh, of course, the blacks found out about it, man, and they uh, got a little picture together, and they went after these white boys, right? And they start picking mm -hmm. them off. And a lot of people don't know about this story, but it's an amazing story. It got so bad. They had about 25 black men they had to call in, the Mississippi governor had to call in 3,000 troops. And, you know, they end up coming back and battling with the blacks. But I say, it's an amazing story because it shows how we, we don't put up with this stuff. And when we 
we, I, I call it chemistry. They, everyone says black people need unity. I'm like, no, we need chemistry, man, because everybody does different things with one goal in mind, like you're trying to set with these reparations, right? So I'm like, look, yeah. unity is a natural byproduct of chemistry. Black people need chemistry, man. Not not unity. That comes naturally, man, like a on a sports team. So anyway, yes, I wanted to put out that one idea, uh, idea to you. And the other one is the other day you were talking about, you made this thing with Michael Moore, uh, the congressional pimp. I seen that. Yeah. And my idea to you, man, and I think it'll be much, at, at least as good as them Borat things. I think you should pull that off again, but make it a movie and use that sort of idea, especially in the what's going on today with all these corrupt politicians, man, and things like that, man. That's all I really wanted to say. And I appreciate this. Uh, uh, you know, you're bringing me on, man. Yeah, my real name is Red Mason. I'm, I'm from Compton, man. And I used to walk. My man. Working law Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to Compton. Right? Good information, brother. Real good stuff. But yeah, the point my brother was making is that you're absolutely right. We were not just laying down, taking stuff. I, I really want to drill that message into black folks' heads. That's why my last movie, American Maroon, that's the movie that's out right now. We we go into what was really happening in the 60s. We weren't walking around being nonviolent at all. We weren't just letting people beat on us like they show you them images of Selma. There's a re when they keep showing the same images over and over again, you know, that's that's like a psych op they're trying to do. Every time they talk about the 60s, you'll see the same Really about three or four images. You see the same images. Of black people getting dog sicked on them. You see the same images down there in Selma of John Lewis and them getting beat up. And they just keep showing that over and over again. And then white people elevated John Lewis. Remember, the black community did not elevate John Lewis. And, and, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm always shitting on John Lewis. I'm not. I mean, he, he, he was whatever. But white people made John Lewis a thing. Family, you don't see murals of John Lewis nowhere. Murals are usually done by people in the, on the grassroots. When you go around the grassroots, go around the hood, or go around areas, and you see people with making murals, you see people that make a mural of Dr. King. You see a mural of Malcolm X. You know, you see murals of the Black Panthers. We, we put murals up of people who were revered on the grassroots. The grassroots never really rocked with John Lewis. John Lewis was a creation of the white media and the white political structure to give the illusion that his tactic of getting beat up was something that was what we needed to aspire for, this nonviolent. White people were promoting that whole nonviolent. They... They got a couple of King speeches talking about nonviolence and then just doubled down on that. But let's be clear. <clears throat> Dr. King has some cats who was strapped up around him now. Let's be clear. Unfortunately, he didn't have them around in Memphis. He had a bunch of ops around him. <clears throat> but um, we weren't on that nonviolent stuff, man. They don't tell you about the brothers in Philly and Jersey who was on rooftops picking these race soldiers off. They don't tell you about brothers who was skyjacking planes and getting ransom and um, taking hostages out the country. And they don't tell you about the brothers who was blowing up these police stations. They don't tell you about that. They don't tell you about all the real history, man. Learn the real history. We were turning up in this country heavy. So... They're very good at trying to rewrite that history. Barry Akon, what's up, man? Hey, Trick, what's going on? I'm good. What's on your mind, brother? Oh uh, no, I'm good. I just got a quick question. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the Nikki Haley uh, interview on the Breakfast Club, but it it kind of it threw me off a little bit because I feel what that, happened. Uh, I saw a picture. I, you know, I, I saw a picture of her with Charlemagne and Envy. What the hell happened in that interview? Did they grill her about her bullshit? 
I mean, yeah, they they did, but I I still feel that um, the reason why I'm I'm calling it because um I feel like when it comes to conservatives coming on that platform, it doesn't always seem like they're prepared. And you know, I'm not trying to throw, I'm not trying to throw shade at the preface stuff or anything. I know you're cool with those guys, but I feel like someone like you, if you were on the show as a guest, debating with these conservatives that they always have on that platform, you you would out debate them. I know you would. I just feel like Charlemagne and Envy, they kind of not really like have like the political knowledge or enough background to even debate them at times. That's all I'm saying. I'll lay my plan there. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to see what was said. I, I have no idea. I, I, I want to see what that interview was about, what she said, what did they say to her about all that nonsense she was spewing. I would really like to see how that turned out. Miss Er, is it Arissa? I can't see for shit, man. Is it Ernisa? Man, my eyesight is so bad. Yes, it's Ernisa. It's Ernisa. Ernisa. Yes. Good evening, everyone. So, what do you what do you think about uh, Bishop Talbert Swan for your revelation? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Bishop. Yes, indeed, Bishop would be great. I love Bishop Talbert Swan. He's a writer, very thorough brother. I would love him up there. That would be great. That's all I had to say. Thank you, dear. Okay, Bishop, and he's been in one of my movies before, so y'all uh, love working with the Bishop. Um, who is this? We got in here. Let's get, um, let me see who we are. Um, who's this, um, Burrito Groper? Burrito Groper, hop on. Hey, Tariq, uh, I was just wondering, are you interested in around 7 p.m.? Yeah, your phone day? broke. Sorry? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, your phone was breaking up, sir. Now, what happened? Uh, would you be interested in coming on to uh, Space tomorrow around 7, 8 p.m. Eastern-ish? Well, or Space with who? Uh, Dalton Claude Felter and Paul Allen. Have you heard of them? Never. Who are these people? Who are they? Uh, they're just friends with uh, Nick Fuentes. You heard of him? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, like they, uh, they're going to stream it on Cozy, uh, Nick's platform, and it's going to be a Twitter space, so there's no video. You just got to just hop in, and we'll add you up to the uh, speakers if you're interested. No, they just want black clout. They want black people to give them some, some clout and some shine. Basically, they're going to have a I troll. I can't lie. It's true. It's a, yes, yeah, so it's just a troll space, eh, a time-wasting troll space for them to get clout. No, we'd yeah. love to have you on a, like, as a I'm, serious I'm not guest. here to. I'm not here to help white supremacists get clout. They, they're, they're already designated as open white supremacists. So basically they have to troll. I think we have more in food. common than you. Uh... We don't. We don't. You guys are open white supremacists. The rest of white society is standoffish because of you guys. They don't even fuck with you guys. So y'all have to get clout by trying to get black people to come and platform you. And not you true. Clout. I mean, we, we try to get a wide variety of different people, you know. I mean, yeah, what, what's your what's your argument? You don't you, what's your position? You don't really have a real position. Well, I'm just trying to find uh, people to get on to the uh, show. Right. You don't have a position. You just let's get on the show so y'all can just have a troll space and just. No, no. We were going to interview you, you know, get to know you, uh, you that, tell your side of the story and then uh, and that and that kind of stuff. But but you guys are white supremacists, though. So nobody takes you seriously. We will so, also have like guest callers and uh, come on. That's and ask not a, questions. That's the, how was that? How would that work for me? What how how would that benefit me? Well, I mean, it could uh, you know boost your uh, platform and account and I'm sure all that kind of stuff. Sir, I almost I, I get almost a thousand people every time I go live, and it's in the middle of the night, sir. And so I don't need you guys. You guys, are the one who needs a platform, you don't get those kind of numbers. Those little troll spaces you have. So y'all need Black Daddy. I don't want to be Black Daddy to white supremacists, sir. It'll be a fun time, dude. I promise you won't regret it. Well, y'all don't really have anything to talk about. You're not saying anything constructive. And your jokes and your trolling ain't even funny. See, over here, you know, we can, we're funny and witty. You guys don't, your, your shit ain't even funny. That's why nobody really listens to you guys. And you guys have to get us over there to, to kind of bring clout to you. Yeah, you see, it's not a benefit to me. I mean, 
So what's your argument? You don't have, what's your position? You don't really have a position. What's your position? What's your argument? Well, we, we're going to discuss uh, things that happened this week in the news, and we'd like uh, get your opinion on it and stuff like that. And then now, you know, what, now, what's your name, Burrito Man? What's your name? Burrito something? What's your name? Breck, uh, burrito Groiper. R- right. So that that's not even funny. Your name ain't even witty. You see? it's You're basically these 4chan nerds who think doing goofy, nerdy shit is just funny to your little nerdy clique, which is just not funny to anybody else. Ah, come on. You know it's funny, buddy. It's not, man. That's why you guys stay on 4chan mad because brothers are banging on white women. That's what you... (laughs) That's what you guys are really mad at. How do y'all feel about them birth rates, man? These white supremacist enclaves you guys are living in and them birth rates are terrible. How do y'all really feel about that? Uh, it's not really my position to talk about it, but um, I'm I mean, just it, here it to aff- get some it, guests it, onto it, the show. It affects you. How do you feel about that? You're part of that white supremacist circle. How do you feel about that? Well, it's an unfortunate fact. You know, this country was, you know, founded by white Americans. Really? Yes, it was, sir. Okay. Well, was the real founders were black people. We were the foundation of this thing. How were you the founders and you guys, your community, failed when they tried to build this Well, nation? I mean, I wouldn't say... You would say what? Uh oh. Uh oh. Did you drop your meth pipe on the phone, sir? Uh oh. I have uh, different there you go. arguments, I guess, but I'm just here to find some guests onto the show. And I appreciate your time and having me on, though. I appreciate that. There you go. All right, brother. You have a good one. All you right. as well, sir. All right. Well, these white supremacists are phony as a $3 bill, all right? Fake as hell. Yeah, they they want us to give them clout. Just like, uh, you know, um, Shapiro just did a rap video, and and, and I've seen it, and a lot of folks sent me Shapiro doing a rap video. Um, I didn't say one word about it. That's what they wanted. They wanted us to, to, to sit here and talk about it, to signal boost it. I didn't give it no ink or no air. I'm, I'm reluctantly mentioning it now just to make a point. Um, it's basically designed to get us to talk about them, to boost their status. It's a nothing burger. It's like, hey, look at us. We're making a rap video. Look, our rap record is number one. Look at us. Eh. They tried to get us riled up and no, nah, no, nah, I ain't even taking the bait. I'm not taking the bait. All right, who is this? Oh, it seemed like we got a lot of the white supremacists that came in here now. Okay. All right, hop on. Um, I don't know what your name is, but hop on. Yo, 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 what's up? Thanks for having me what's, up here. Yeah, you know, what's your name, sir? I'm Hoplite. Hoplite? Hoplite, yeah. I'm uh, I'm friends Hop- with Reups. Hoplite. Okay. You you real you, you didn't get his name right. If you say his name is nah, I, 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 it's a joke I have with him. It's funny. There you go. Now, uh, sir, where where are you from? You can't tell from my voice. I'm from New York. Okay. Where's your family from? From is America. That Italian? Yeah. Like, something like Italian. Yeah, Italian? Like, yeah. I mean, is it yes or no, sir? You just kinda... I said yeah. Oh, okay. What part of Italy is your family from? I mean, listen, I'm not going to dox that, but I'm on how the you gonna, south side. How, how you going to dox some shit decades ago, sir? How you going to dox that? That don't make no sense. Where you from for real? Where's your family from? Hey, hop on. Because you already started lying. Oh, Lord. Okay. Boy, y'all just kill the comedy. All right, let's get um physical Bitcoin. All right, physical Bitcoin, hop on. It's been a long time, on? long time coming, and I'm super excited to be up here on your own space. I can't believe that you actually brought me up. I'm fucking thrilled, and I love, you know, every you know everybody but let, let, let's get let, let, let's figure it out let, let, let's figure out this racism 
Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Let's figure let's, it out. Let's... I mean, that guy before was a fucking, you know, he's who he is. How about we say that? Right? Okay. All right, Tariq. Let's give me a question. What, what's your question? Okay. Now, 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 where are you from? I'm from uh, Middle America, Louisville, Kentucky. I, I was born in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my mama, uh, she she gave birth to me in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I'm a you know I was born in San Antonio, but uh, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. You know. And uh, okay, let me get some more calls. I don't want to hear a drunk hillbilly tonight. Man. Okay, all right, let's, let's just cut that short. I hear drunk hillbilly talk that was gonna go nowhere. All right, um, let me see. Yeah, yeah, it was about to be drunk hillbilly talk, and I don't, you don't really have anything to say, sir. Yeah, I've been born in Texas, and I'm uh, born in Texas. Okay, oh Lord, he's one of them. Y'all, black folks know those you know those kind. Those are kind of that's a job who just sits around shoveling horse shit in your face all day. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. That phony camaraderie. I don't want to hear it. Fake as a three dollar bill. Okay, okay. Let's get some more people in here. Oh, I see a lot of these little white supremacist hands being raised. Um, no, um, this guy, you're playing corny sound effects on, on the thing, so you don't really have anything to say. Let's get Ace Yoda, Mr. Ace Yoda in here. Ace Yoda. All right. Well, I've been uh, waiting kind of patiently. I just wanted to say that if you notice, you sit back and notice that a lot of these folks come in and they will like kind of shield some of the talking points that really hit on shit for real. And I like, you got to look past that, man. You got to really look past that and you got to really like get to the root of what these folks be talking about, man. Cause these folks really be racist for real. These folks really be against us, bro. Like, and I just, I I just be encouraging everybody to goddamn like stay woke, bro. Like, and I'm a little intoxicated right now, so don't mind me. But I just you been noticing everything. Yeah, a lot of these guys are low key. Well, not even low key; they're very racist. But then they come up and try to with the fake friendliness, and you can just smell the fakeness a mile away. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste time. Hey, let's figure this racism thing out, buddy. Well, you need to figure it out in your community. That's where the racism is coming from, sir. Figure it out in your community. You don't call me talking about you want to fix it. All right, let's get um DP. Let's get DP in here. Mr. DP, hop on DP. Or Rastan, DP or Rastan. R Rastad is here. You hear me, you guys? No. Good morning, good evening. How are you guys? I'm good, Mr. Rastan. Where, where are you from, sir? What part of Nigeria? Uh, I was born in Kenya, but I live in Amsterdam in Holland. So uh, I'm a Rasta man, you know, I'm a heavy believer, you know, I'm really, really a heavy Christian, okay? So yeah. uh, what is this raising around? What, what's going around here, you know? What's, what's going on? What is it? I don't, I don't, I, I'm a black guy with dreadlocks, but I don't find any racism, any racism around me. You know, uh, really, 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 I integrated myself and uh, where I live and uh, I'm okay. But when I look at, uh, wait, 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 I focus wait, too much. Wait, Sorry. wait, wait, wait. You, so you, you, you live in Holland and you don't see any racism in Holland? Uh, to me, to me, to me, to me, they don't uh, bring that shit to me. You know what I mean? Uh, white people, you know, you know, the Arabic people who are alone from, uh, uh, let's say, from uh, uh, Turkey and uh, Morocco. There are many here in Netherlands. So, uh, like, you find for me, uh, yeah, with time, you know, integrate good, you know, I'm like them. I don't like bullshit. Slow down, slow down, yeah. slow down brother, slow down. You must have had one of them edibles up there in Holland. Let's slow it down. Let's let's talk. We're having a conversation. I've been to Holland before. They um, Do you ever see the Black Peter celebration they have up there? The white people put on that black face and march up and down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> for the first time, I was uh, a bit not okay with it. 
but it's a tradition and a, uh, it's like this guy from Spade, he was a slave, the black guy now, a slave of the master, you know, he's a slave. So uh, the story comes, you know, you know he give presents to the, to, the, to the children, you know, from Spain. And they, 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 they act that thing every year, December 5th. Okay. Oh, so and you so if you have kids, you have to do that. It's, it's, it's a... <laughs> That's but true, so but inside, inside me, it, it, it's mocking a black person. It's uh, bringing another style of shit. But is the, you know, we don't have to go deep in it. Let's enjoy. Let's have fun. For it's, me, it's like that. It's, just, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. There you go. So when you um you left Kenya, when how long have you been in Holland from Kenya? Uh, twenty five years. Twenty five years. What part of Kenya are your family from? I'm from uh, let's say uh, Ruaka. That is a, a central. I'm a Kikuyu guy. Yeah. Okay. Do you go back and visit the family in Kenya? Yes, yes. I love my mother. I love my sisters, and uh, yeah, I do that. There you go, my man. Um, do you try to help build Kenya back up, or do you just? Say yes, that? yes, yes. And they hit me hard. Yeah, they hit me hard. And the reason is I try to to, to try around to help them, not me. And uh, you know, uh, they hit me hard. So they con me. Let's uh, let, let's use that word. They con. They don't do what we had arranged before we started the deal. Okay. And I'm putting in my money. Okay, so that one I'm uh, I'm out of that shit. I better do my shit when I'm there. Okay, yeah. There you go. All right, so how's everything going with you up there in Holland? What are you doing up there? Uh, I work. I work. I'm a truck driver and uh, I do logistics and a lot of things. You know, I'm employed. Uh, I, I work like uh, three years in a different company from uh, when uh, uh, COVID started. That shit. So which was bullshit. It came from America. That shit because uh, you had to vote in uh, at home so that you steal. You know, 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 I follow, I follow, I follow, uh, me, I follow American news from the day Donald Trump came in. Yeah, I, 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 I to be honest, I have no idea what this man is talking about. I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be cordial. He's cordial. I'm cordial. I, to, I just have to be honest. I have no idea what he's talking about. He's just saying random stuff. And I just, I don't know. I just don't know what he's saying. He's saying so much random stuff on top of the accent, so I don't know. Um, let's get uh, Mr. Chairman in. God bless that guy, though. God bless him. Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes. What's the word? Big up yourself, Tariq. What's going on, man? How are you, sir? What's on your mind? Man, I'm doing okay, but I couldn't believe that on the first day of Black History Month, we got this quote-unquote pork dread rasta talking about, oh, it's okay with Black Pete. It's funny. We need to get along with them. No Rasta would ever act like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude was on one. He was all over the place, man. I'm like, Lord, bless this guy. All right, let's get um, Guerlermo. 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 I can't pronounce that. Guerlermo. 